The United States emerged as the world's undisputed superpower nation following the end of the Cold War and eventual collapse of the Soviet Union. And since then, it has continued to set the standards for the rest of the globe when it comes to political, economic, technological, and military advancements. Currently, the United States has the world's most lethal military force, and even in the face of competition from Russia and China, its superiority in this regard remains unprecedented. But just in case there is anyone out there who still needs to be convinced, here are some of the top reasons why you should never mess with the United States military. Backed by an endless stream of cash inflow from Congress, the United States military has continued to leverage its air power to score high points against adversaries in different battlefields across the world. The country is known to possess the most powerful Air Force unit in the world with an unimaginable collection of fighter jets, satellites, aircraft carriers, missiles, and other high-tech air-based warfare systems. Currently, the U.S. operates the largest fleet of combat aircraft in the world with a total of over 14,000 aircraft in its inventory. These aircraft are classified under 10 district asset classes and shared amongst the six branches of the U.S. military service, including the Air Force, Army, Coast Guard, Marine Corps, Navy, and the Space Force. Current data shows that the U.S. Air Force alone has 5,217 operational aircraft, 400 intercontinental ballistic missiles, and 170 military satellites. In comparison, the entire Russian military force has just over 4,000 aircraft. Other branches in the U.S. military are well equipped as well, with the Army and Navy possessing well over 3,000 and 2,000 aircraft respectively. As we pointed out earlier, these aircraft are classified under different categories. The largest category is called the Airlift slash Cargo slash Utility Unit. It comprises more than 4,000 military assets mainly used to transport civil and military officials and humanitarian aid. Coming in second is the category of aircraft classified as the Fighter or Attack Unit. This is where you'll find combat-ready fighter jets like the F-35s, F-16s, A-10s, and the deadly stealth aircraft like the F-22 and the B-2 bomber. Other categories or classifications include the Special Operations Forces, Trainers, Attack Helicopters, Long Range Strike Units, Anti-Surface Slash Submarine Groups, and Air Refueling Units. So whatever the threat is, as long as it's in the air, you can bet that the United States is beyond capable to deal with it. Another reason why no country should attempt to go to war against the United States is its strength upon the waters, which till this day remain unmatched by any other country in the world. The United States has many amphibious military assets, ranging from warships to super-advanced submarines, and, more importantly, the moving war islands called aircraft carriers. These carriers give the U.S. an overwhelming advantage over its adversaries. Currently, the United States operates a total of 11 super-large Nimitz-class aircraft carriers, representing over 23% of all the military aircraft carriers in the world. The next closest competitors are the United Kingdom, Italy, and China, with two nuclear aircraft carriers each. Even if the rest of these countries combine all their aircraft carriers together, the United States military would still have an advantage numerically and otherwise. The current U.S. nuclear carriers can carry between 70 to 80 aircraft and displace around 100,000 to 104,000 long tons of water. On average, each U.S.-owned aircraft carrier is worth between $4 to $5 billion. They are usually about 20 stories high and 305 meters long. And according to reports, one U.S. nuclear aircraft carrier is made up of around 1 billion individual components. But despite the gigantic size of these carriers, they never travel alone because they're incredibly vulnerable. So whenever a U.S. carrier leaves home, it is accompanied by a colony of support vessels. These include two guided missile cruisers, two destroyers, one frigate, two submarines, and a supply ship. Together, they form perhaps the most expensive and deadliest strike combination in the world, known as a carrier battle group. 
Any country planning to mess around with the U.S. military will have more things to worry about because a more prominent nuclear aircraft carrier called the USS Gerald R. Ford is expected to enter service later this year. And when it does, it's going to be the world's most expensive and technologically advanced aircraft carrier. In other words, good luck to anyone who plans to mess with the United States in the future. If you've reached this far into the video, we'd like to give you a huge thanks. You can extend your support by subscribing to the channel and turning that notification bell on so you don't miss any of the content we upload. Comment down below, I subbed, for your chance to be entered into our monthly shoutout giveaway. The next reason why almost every country on the surface of the Earth wants to be in the good books of the United States is because of its nuclear triad program. This is basically a massive collection of intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs, and nuclear warheads. Since the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombing of 1945, nuclear weapons have not been used in a conflict environment. But the United States does have a truckload of these weapons. About 400 deployable ICBMs and 3,800 nuclear warheads stockpiled in a safe haven waiting to be unleashed on anyone and anything that threatens its sovereignty. ICBMs are missiles with a minimum range of 5,000 kilometers, and like the aircraft carriers we described earlier, they do not travel alone. They're designed to carry multiple nuclear warheads and can be launched from land, air, or sea-based platforms. Since the LGM-118 Peacekeeper missile was removed in 2005, the U.S. military has operated only one variant of the land-based ICBMs. They are called the Minuteman III and are stored in hardened silos across five states, including Colorado, Montana, Nebraska, North Dakota, and Wyoming. Since entering service in 1970, the Minuteman III family of ICBMs has been the backbone of the U.S. land-based nuclear strategic force. Between 2002 and 2012, they've been upgraded to the tune of $7 billion, giving them a near-perfect reliability rating, making them several times deadlier than what they used to be. Today, a typical Minuteman III ICBM has a maximum flying range of 13,000 kilometers, which is slightly more than the diameter of the Earth at 12,742 kilometers. The Minuteman III ICBMs can travel at speeds of up to 15,000 miles per hour while carrying multiple warheads of between 300 and 475 kilotons. These warheads are believed to be 20 times greater than the bombs used on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Interestingly, each of these warheads can be pre-programmed to attack different targets through a technology known as MIRV, or Multiple Independently Targetable Reentry Vehicles. Come 2029, the United States military will launch a $100 billion ground-based strategic deterrent program to replace the Minuteman III fleet and upgrade all existing launch facilities. And if somehow you've got a plan to escape the first three reasons we've mentioned, we bet you don't have an answer to this next U.S. military weapon we're about to mention, because they'll find you regardless of where you hide. Smart bombs or laser-guided bombs are precision-guided missiles that are controlled by a computer-based system. They are reportedly 100 to 200 times more efficient than conventional bombs against premium hard targets and 20 to 40 times more effective against soft targets. Since they were first used in the Vietnam War, different branches of the United States military forces have adopted smart bombs, and there's probably no better deterrent for anyone planning to mess with the U.S. than this ultimate killing device. One last reason why you shouldn't be found messing with the United States is drones. You've probably seen delivery and surveillance drones somewhere around. They look all nice and harmless, until they find their way into the hands of the military. In recent years, the United States has increased its investment in this regard, consequently enabling UAVs to carry out combat and surveillance missions that are usually reserved for fighter jets. According to top sources, the U.S. military plans to add 1,000 combat drones to its inventory by 2030. 
These five factors that we've highlighted emphasize the current position of the United States military as a global military force, and it's unlikely that they'll relinquish that position anytime soon. So if there's anyone out there thinking of messing with the United States military, we strongly advise that they think again. Have you learned something new about the US military? How long do you think the US military dominance will last? Let us know your opinion in the comment section. Be sure to check out this video over here.